What's up guys, welcome to Blake's Garage. Today we got Project Free 36 again. Uh, I was able to go out to the junkyard to pick and pull and I've been like, mind you, probably six times uh, every time one of these E36 comes in. I'm checking for new seats because these seats are blown out. They're disgusting, they're ripped. This thing doesn't even like hold up which is kind of crazy. They're just all together nasty. The, the passenger is not as bad, but that's pretty common. Now, I found these awesome seats. Convertible, E36, interior, sport seats. Oh yeah, power. Uh, I went ahead and cleaned this one up. I'm gonna go ahead and clean this one up next. I'll show you guys that process real quick. These little back panels on the convertible, these are, you know, convertible specific, uh, the verts, the sedans and the coupes, they all have different, like these little back panel things. So this is all nasty, all nasty and crusty. I got new ones of those and I got new back seats. Still need to get window regulator motors. I'll be doing a video on that sometime, but here are the rear seats and gosh, is it missing that center section? I didn't even, honestly, is that normal? I don't know. I never even noticed that, but maybe that center section is missing. Um, anyways. These seats are just gross and nasty. The headrests, however, headrests don't seem that bad. Um, these headrests don't seem that bad either. So maybe that's a good part, but I mean, the leather's all gross and nasty and these back kick panels are gross. So we're gonna go ahead and clean those up. I got these new ones right here. Check this out, nice and pristine. Like I was saying, the headrests on these, ah, slightly blown out. So not that big of a deal, but everything else on this looked really, really good. So that was awesome. I need to kill the battery on this thing um, when I take the seats out. Now, you might be saying, why is that? Well, it's for the airbag system on this car. I guess I'll hit the e-brake. It's for the airbag system on the car. Now, you might be saying, well, what's that gotta do with removing the seats? Well, it has a lot to do with removing the seats, actually. The seats themselves have this little piece right here. Forgetting the name of it, but anyways, essentially what it does is basically shoots a shotgun charge, like a boom, out of the back of this thing and tightens up the seatbelt. So it's like a, oh, a seatbelt tensioner. So this will go, ugh, and like suck down. Uh, you can see right here, it's a little green. I think green means um, armed, meaning ready to explode. And you just twist this little thing to red and that's uh, disarmed, uh, not ready to explode. So. It's a good idea to uh, turn those off before you remove the seats if you can. Disconnect the battery on the car and we'll get these things taken out of here. One thing I love besides like the huge batteries and oh yeah, I kind of rigged this. Put this little board in here so it wouldn't slide around is the uh, BMW tools. I have the full like tool kit that came with this car which comes in super handy on these. So if you're ever at a junkyard, like even the lug nut remover thingy, if you're ever at a junkyard and you see some of the stuff, I definitely recommend to uh, try to grab it if you're missing a piece, because check this out. I don't even gotta go into my toolbox to disconnect my battery. That is pretty freaking rad. Uh, also another trick too is if you forgot the tools at the junkyard, possibly, just possibly, a local BMW may actually have some freaking tools in it that'll help you out. So let's go ahead and take that negative side of that battery off. All right, we'll let it sit for a little bit. We'll go ahead and take the seats out. Now you might be saying to yourself, well, crap, if you take the seats out, how are you gonna get to the back bolts? Well, I'm gonna show you the junkyard trick to get the seats out. Because when you're at a scrapyard, they do not allow you to have batteries. However, they do allow you to bring drills. So what we're gonna do is hook up a drill battery to the circuit in order to activate the seats forward and backward. So I grabbed a 16 millimeter wrench, busted those front two nuts off. Those are easy to get to. That's pretty standard unless you're dealing with someone that's like super short and then they're up front, but whatever. Uh, anyways, now the other bolts, they're under there. These are actually bolts. These ones are nuts. Uh, the bolts are in the back. So I gotta move the seat forward. Battery's disconnected. Let's pretend we're at the junkyard and we have a battery. Now, I'm not gonna use this one because um, I find it a little harder to use these, but what we're gonna do is use the prongs. Now, you totally could, oh wait, actually, actually up in the top, 
in the top you totally can i didn't actually see the uh the prongs up there oh oh actually you could use this totally too um but i'm gonna go grab my wire and we're gonna hook it up to the little fuse box up here and make this work technically without a battery here's what you need to make this happen two wires a battery some sort of drill battery this is an 18 volt dewalt you can use a milwaukee battery whatever this is old school style but i don't know it just it was pretty easy for me to use this one but like i said you can use any battery you want so next i just end up putting the battery right here you're gonna want to make a ground wire now on this battery go ahead and look up um how your battery hooks up but i want to say that's 19 volts uh positive so uh, the positive wire is on the inside here, negative on, this, on the outside. I just went like this, on a quick little chassis ground bolt. I literally just had it like this. Now, obviously make sure this doesn't short out, but I made it go to negative, okay? Then, what we're gonna do is open this guy up. It's your fuse box. Now, on the underside of the lid here, you're gonna have a nice little fuse documentation thing. You're gonna have a driver's uh, seat adjustment, which is circuit number 40. And then you're gonna have a passenger, which is uh, circuit number five. Where is that? Oh yeah, passenger seat adjustment, circuit number five. We'll go from number five, and then also one through 10 right here. So all we gotta do is count over five spots right here. So one, two, three, four five it's actually this first one right here um i'm gonna go ahead and take the fuse out because in my opinion it makes it a little bit easier so i'll remove the fuse and the outer most area is uh what you're just gonna shove the wire into so we're just gonna liven up that circuit if you will with this 18 volt batteries just kind of shove it into the slot. If you have nice connectors, awesome, do that. Make some nice connectors for this, but I'm trying to show it basically the crappiest way, if you will. Now it shouldn't spark or anything. I'm gonna hook it up right there. Okay, so now we'll walk over to the seat. As long as I put that on the right one, it should move. Air my good. Let's try that again. <laughs> See if it works here. Oh yeah. So circuit number five, boom. See the seat bolts right there. And like I'm saying, as you can see, negative post, the battery's totally off. It's just running off of this battery right here. So it works out really, really well. Um, that's basically the rig. You just power it up, pop the circuit. I stabbed it into there and stabbed it into there. You can make nicer connectors. I would recommend it if you have time before you go to the junkyard. Make up some nice connectors, get some stuff, like do some little uh, butt splices, maybe something that goes on here to make it easy. And if you ever have to do this rig again and just kind of keep it in your tools. But if you're out at the scrapyard, cut some wire, do it like this, it's gonna work. We'll go ahead and disconnect it. And then uh, I can do circuit number 40 uh, over here. After that, I'll go ahead and put this back in here, the fuse back in, because I don't think I'm gonna put the seats back in tonight. But I wanted to show you that because I thought it was pretty cool. Um, it's just a good trick to get these out. I know people always have that question. I tried looking it up. Some people kind of talked about it on the forum, but I don't know if it's like a, you know, a hidden trick that like, if you know, you know, if you don't, sorry, seats are mine. That might be kind of the thing, but uh, yeah, let's get those out. Pretty sick, huh? They're so freaking heavy. Seats are... I don't know, probably 40 pounds a piece or something. Kind of awkward. Ugh. Nasty. So this is the other reason you want to take this stuff out is to obviously clean the carpet because this is pretty freaking gross. We got peanuts, we got slime. It's nasty. Okay, so now I'll show you guys how to take out the rear seats. Again, these are nasty as well. That's why I got the new seats. Like I said though, headrests the headrest may be better first thing on these seats all you have to do pull the bottom half off pull up and pull out get rid of your 
nasty asshole seat. All right. Secondly, man, we got like some just random ass disgusting candy back here. Uh, this is an emergency latch too for like the, um, I think this is for the sunroof. Don't exactly know what it does. Maybe I should look in the book for that. Um, headrest. You take the headrest off. And these need to come up. And that's how you get the top part of the uh, seat out. Ugh. They are kind of a pain in the ass to uh, to get out, but yeah, these ones aren't cracked at all, so that's cool. I'll probably use the top of these. Um, I may replace the seat belts because I actually did buy some, so may do that. This thing has like subwoofers and speaker systems and stuff. I don't know what's up with that. I'm gonna have to figure out what kind of stereo systems in this or whatever, but. I don't know, it has some amps in it in the past. I don't know how old those are. Okay, so now here, I think all I gotta do is just tug forward. Yeah. Now, I will tell you this. I didn't know how to take this apart before I went to the junkyard. So, going to the junkyard and ripping this stuff out, it's kind of nice because, well, you can save yourself from breaking things in your own car. So that's kind of cool. Okay. So this, Let me get out of here. Very nice, very nice. Okay, so I got these new uh, kick panels. I'll probably go ahead and take these out later on. Um, but yeah, there's my seat belts. Seat belts are kind of gross. So I think I do have some better seat belts. Um, yeah, I'm gonna vacuum this thing up because it's gross, but um, yeah. I think I'm probably gonna do clean up the carpets and that sort of thing. So maybe I'll show you that or whatever. A vacuumed bit and then after I throw the interior in, so. So if you don't realize how much better these new seats are, first off, they're sport seats like I was saying. So they have better bolstering and all that where these ones do not. These are gross. They're nasty. Ew, ew, ew. Um, interior of this thing is pretty destroyed as far as uh, carpet goes but I was able to clean up the front so if you like kind of look at the front area of the car it doesn't look like total shit come back here looks pretty nasty here's what the car looks like on this side after a vacuuming on the carpet now you can see the carpet is still pretty freaking dirty on this side it's pretty gross um, I have not cleaned up the carpet at all on this side minus just vacuuming so what I'm gonna do is do what I did to the other side I'm not sure if I showed you that side before, but it was super nasty. It was like really, really gross. And I got it nice and clean, actually. Now, this looks so much better than before. For whatever reason, kind of transferred this number. I don't, I don't know what this red is all about, but you can actually like see a number, something 62, kind of random. Uh, I don't know if that's maybe like underneath and it bleeds through or what that is all about. But um, yeah, it looks overall pretty good. Still a little bit of a stain right here from where the feet, the original foot was. But I mean, with the seat, it's not gonna show any of this, but maybe that little area, plus this area will be all clean. Gotta clean that up and it'll look really good. So after a really thorough vacuuming, this is the stuff I'm using right here. This uh, Malco, Choice of the Bros Carpet and Upholstery Cleaner. Um, it foams up pretty decently. So I'll show you kind of what that looks like and it'll actually like help pull stuff. So just kind of spray it on. That's kind of the nastiest area. And you can see how it pulls right up. It's actually pulling some of the dirt already out. So what I like to do at first is I'll actually just grab that with a vacuum and then I'll hit it one more time just because the vacuum uh, seems to just pull out those areas pretty quickly. And then I'll hit it with the drill brush. Just because I feel like it takes this kind of top layer out. And then I'll hit it a little bit more and then agitate. Agitate it up.
So that looks pretty dang good. A couple areas that I couldn't really get the spots out were like right here. Um, also right here is like pretty dang dirty. So I don't know, I might try to rent an extractor. If I use an extractor, it should actually get that stuff out um, because it like pushes the warm water through and does all that stuff and actually will clean it. Um, this is just kind of lifting it. Um, I ended up using the rest of this stuff right here because I ran out of this. I actually like this a little bit better. It seemed to work a little bit better. But anyways, that is pretty much it on the uh, interior cleanup for now. Um, in the next video, we'll go ahead and clean up the upholstery on the new seats and like the door cards and all that stuff and the back seat and get this thing not looking like total crap. So thanks a lot for watching guys. We will talk to you soon later and wrench on.